Today we're going to be working with the Leica RTC 360 laser scanner doing a field demonstration on a nearby parking garage. I will say that the RTC 360 is my favorite scanner that I've used in 27 years of laser scanning. My name is Bruce White. I'm the president of Sterling Systems. I've got geez, over 30 years of civil survey experience now, 27 in laser scanning. This example project is a project that I did the training video on about doing different site maps. So I decided to go to the second floor and use this as an RTC demonstration. This is the resulting point cloud of the data that I collected off 12 setups. And I did the, all the field work by myself in just under 30 minutes. As I said, we're using the Leica RTC 360 on this project along with field data collection of Field 360 running on an Apple iPad and registering the data with Leica Register 360. Before we get started on our data collection, let's talk a little bit about RTC 360 key features. It does 2 million points per second with a 130 meter range. A full medium scan with five bracket HDR photos is 1 minute 51 seconds. It's IP54 certified, so that means the laser mirror is enclosed and it can operate in the rain. It works exceedingly well on shiny objects. We'll talk more about that in a minute. It does two-pass noise removal, has GPS, compass, IMU, altimeter, and very, very clean data. And the most important thing that it has is the VIZ automatic registration system. Let's take a look at some of the data from the RTC. This was done by a utility company for the overhead wires out in a wooded area. And you can see those wires are crisp. This photo of a point cloud is of a silver, highly reflective metal on the drop ceiling and it came out really nice showing how well it does on reflective surfaces. To be clear, this is the point cloud, not a photo. Again, we have a screen capture of a point cloud, not a photo of a mechanical room. The detail is so good on these, not only can you read the signs, but you can also read raised letters on pipes. We love getting feedback, so subscribe to the channel, like the video, comment, or share it. Everything is turned on, so we're gonna go into the Field 360 software and launch that at the bottom. And then we are going to connect to the scanner. So we just say yes, well, it establishes that connection. And then we're going to create a new job. Pretty simple, we just give it a name. We can select on the camera icon and include a photo if we would like. So we can take any picture that we want to use as a thumbnail for that project. And then we just select that project to go into it. We're gonna hit the leftmost button down at the bottom and that allows us to uh, start the scanning menu. We can set the resolution, whether we want photos or not. You can see that the times are updating, whether we want to pass or not, uh, or we wanna turn on or off viz, which you'll pretty much always want on. And then when we're ready, we're just gonna hit the scan button and it's going to get started. Okay, we're gonna let this run at just normal speed, meaning I'm not gonna speed up the video so you can see how long it takes. It, again, it's shooting two million points per second. One of the things I really like about Leica is that you don't have a billion settings prior to setting up a scan. You set the scan density, low, medium, or high. You set whether you want photos or not whether you want to pass scanning or not, and whether you want viz on or not. That's pretty much it. We don't have to worry about quality settings or do I have to shoot each point two times or eight times, whatever. The data you get out of Leica meets specs at one minute, 51 seconds. So highly accurate, highly clean data. 
the first step is for the scanner to actually do the laser scan and then it'll go back one more time around and take the photos. It has now finished its 51 second scan and is starting to take the photos. The photos, regardless of environment, will take one minute for five bracket HDR. The scanner is just completing its first setup right now. And before we move it to the second location, I want to talk about what exactly the VIZ system is. The Visual Inertial System, or VIZ system, is really what makes the RTC unique. And it automatically tracks its position from one setup to another to a reasonable degree of accuracy. And then we'll use cloud to cloud registration just to firm that up. We are about to take a look at a video that was done during development that shows all the views from the five different cameras that the Viz system uses and how it moves from location to location. So as we watch this video, we've got the view from five of the Viz cameras on the scanner and the front face video of the scanner. And we're at a setup location right now that's outside of the building. They're gonna pick it up, walk it through the building, and set it down to a second location. As it moves, you'll see a, a flashing dot on Field 360 right in real time on the iPad. And it doesn't matter that we're going from in, outside to inside and then back to outside. It will continuously track to a high degree of accuracy. It's not survey grade accurate, but it is more than enough to be well positioned to do cloud to cloud registration between neighboring scans. And we should still maintain enough overlap between neighboring scans, but it is an incredibly useful tool. Now, when they set this scanner down, it will essentially already know where it's at even before we start the scan. Now let's see it in action on our project. We're about to flip back and I'm picking up the scanner. You can see the dashing moving right on the iPad. Now it's off the screen now because I'm not zoomed out far enough, but when I set it down, it's already knows where it's at and I'm just gonna press the button on the side of the scanner to get it started as quickly as possible. So while it's doing its second scan, let's take a moment and discuss what the RTC does that makes it so good at collecting highly reflective surfaces. For every point that it collects, it sends out two pulses, a high amplitude pulse and a low amplitude pulse. And what normally happens is when the scanners send out something highly reflective, the return is so strong it blows out the, the sensor and essentially you get nothing. So what the RTC does by sending out both is if you're sending out to drywall, the high amplitude pulse will reflect back just fine and the low amplitude pulse will kind of get lost. In a highly reflective surface, when they send out the pulse, the return is too strong, blows out the sensor and you get nothing. But in the case of the RTC, it also sends out that baby pulse, which comes back and is read just fine and honestly ends up being like 4 million pulses per second that it sends out. Let's take a look at some of the quality of the data that it gets. On the left hand side you can see quite a ornamental structure there and right next to it is the cross section from the data of points on the face of that. I mean that is clean. 
Um, this baluster on the stairs, uh, same situation. With this photo, we're showing the quality of the RTC data versus the Leica P40 and the BLK360 in an environment where we're taking this equipment and, and scanning it and showing the cross-section. And you can see the RTC is by far the highest quality. So we've started the second scan now and it's going to take the same 1 minute 51 seconds to complete and then what we'll do is we'll just skip forward to the end of that and show you how to register or finalize the registration between setups 1 and 2. Setup 2 is complete so we're going to pick it up and move it to setup 3. We can watch the uh, position track on the iPad and then we're going to start the scanner for the third setup and then complete the finalization of the registration between one and two. All that we need to do to link one and two is to select the third icon down at the bottom and then select our two setups, hit alignment, it will do pre-aligning and one scan will be blue, one scan will be orange. We just make sure that they're lining up correctly. We can adjust if need be, but as usual, it put it right in the right place. So now we can say optimize and then create link. The scanner is just finishing the third setup. And then we will repeat all the processes. We'll move it to the fourth location, start the fourth scan, and then do the connection for the second and third scans while it's scanning. The fourth scan is underway, and while it's scanning, and I'm linking two and three, let's talk about the two-pass scanning option. When we talk about two-pass scanning, what the scanner is going to do is collect the data twice, and any point that isn't in both data sets gets removed. So here's what it looks like on the first, a single pass, and this is the second pass, and you can see that the vast majority of the points have been removed. There is a little bit of overlap because when you deal with traffic, you run into situations that cars happen to occupy the same space, so it thinks it's a stationary object, but much cleaner. As long as we're talking about cleaning up projects and making life easier, why don't we turn on and talk about classification? That's now an option in Register 360, and it'll do this automatically. So we can turn on our viewer for classifications and open up essentially the different classification layers and basically turn those on or off to get the end result that we want. So let's turn off some vegetation. We'll go down to um, essentially stationary and uh, moving vehicles. We'll turn those off and then the other layer is artifacts. And now it's very clean, that data. And that was all essentially automatically. So essentially that's the recipe for the field work. Go out, move the scanner, get it to the next location. And while it's scanning, go ahead and connect up the last two scans. You just do that over and over until you're done. Now Field 360 does have a lot of other options where up in the top you can see Map, um, which is the 2D version that we've been looking at. We can also look at the photos themselves. We can look at it in 3D and pan and zoom. We can uh, collect assets out there and assets are photos or video or voice notes or text notes or anything else that an iPad can collect. Uh, and it goes all with the project. But I've got other videos that cover Field 360, so we're not gonna get to that level in this video. We're just gonna go ahead and fast forward through all of the rest of the setups.
Now that the field work is complete, we'll come to the computer and uh, process the data and register 360. We'll create a new project. Now we're going to bring the data in. And we had already previously copied the data on the USB to the hard drive. So we're going to go and drag all of that in. And that is our data. So we'll set our parameters, which are basically already set and we hit import. The project's now essentially done. We did 30 minutes out in the field and it took a very short amount of time to process the data itself. So let's look at the results. So here's our 3D point cloud in plan. And if we move to an ISO view, and rotate around a little bit. We've got parts of the hotel next door. And we'll zoom in and we will do a fly through now. I'm going to take a look around at this location, see the ramp down to the first floor, go back into our fly through. But look at the detail, you can see even tire marks, you can see all the parking spaces, you can see the colors. And when you give this file to somebody, they can, they can pull any distances that they want, look at it from any view much better than just a bunch of pictures. I'm going to take a little bit of a look at all this piping that we got. Back to the fly through. We'll pause and take a look at the up ramp to the third floor. and then complete the, the rest of the fly through. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and please leave some comments, subscribe, and call if you need anything.